What's good everyone, it's MJO 23 dan back with another video. Today's video, we're gonna talk about the Air Jordan 34. Alright, so a few weeks back I put my first impressions uh, up on mjo23dan.com. If you guys don't follow my site, definitely do. I give a lot of insight, personal insight about what I feel with sneakers, the community, the culture, all that. So the Jordan 34, uh, I didn't like the blue void. That was the first colorway that dropped. I definitely waited for this one. Uh, I did feel that... Jordan brand should have put out early pairs out there. I know they did like some reserves for Nike Plus members, but I don't think it was enough uh, to get them in the hands of people earlier other than like media, um, which I'm like not at that level yet, I suppose, but um, to each their own. I just like to give my personal opinions about sneakers and the brand that I love, which is Jordan brand. Again, you can follow my website, mjo23dan.com. I gave a lot of first impressions, but I'll go ahead and, you know, kind of go over it now that I have it in hand uh, here on YouTube. So, what do you guys think? This is, this is pretty cool. I mean, no lie. You know, the first thing that really jumps out is the P-Bax Eclipse Plate. And that was pretty much the talk of the town when people were talking about the Air Jordan 34. So as I'm starting out with the pros about this shoe, I'll just stick to it and then I'll get to the cons afterwards. So yeah, definitely this is going to eliminate weight in the shoe. It is what I predicted the lightest Air Jordan signature model to date. And it's like, you know, Jordan brand is always pushing the envelope to make shoes lighter, to make it perform much better for their athletes, for customers like you and I, uh, you know, people that play basketball, all, all the likes. So I, I do enjoy that. I do like that they push the envelope. They try to make this basketball sneaker the best on the market. And it's looking like that all throughout social media that I've pretty much read about. They brought back Herringbone Traction, which I absolutely love. It's a throwback to 90s. And, you know, this is something that's definitely missed in basketball sneakers today because you know not many people get the fortunate opportunity to play indoors whereas I feel like with me uh man even back in the day like I would always play outdoors on dusty courts you know you name it and herringbone traction is grippy it's 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 lovely <laughs> like I I love it so much you know going back over to the upper of the shoe they gave inspiration to the Air Jordan 4 so since it is the year of the Air Jordan 4, where it is, you know, essentially its 30th anniversary this year, they gave us a little bit of a window into the sneaker. So you'll see that the netting on the sides of the Air Jordan 4 and on the tongue and all that is going to give or pay tribute or homage to that of the Air Jordan 34. I love the logo that they put on here. It's kind of like a chemistry inspiration there with the uh, with the four up top. They gave tribute to the Air Jordan 4 again with the Jumpman branding and flight on the tongue. With this colorway specifically, they gave tribute to the Nike Air branding on the back, just like they did with the Air Jordan 4. And there's other colorways that are going to have something different on the back. On the blue void, it was a Jumpman with a box and two different colors. Uh, there's an Eclipse colorway that has a fading Jumpman on the back. So it'd be pretty cool to see like what other variations that they come up with uh, when it comes to this sneaker. The cool part about this shoe too is that you can see the Zoom airbag right through the Eclipse plate. And I just think that working technology, even with the 33, that was cool that you, you can see the technology working. It's, it's there. They're actually putting you know, energy into the sneaker, you're paying 185 bucks for the Air Jordan 34. So, you know, those little things, 
I feel are, you know, part of the storytelling of the shoe. It is an Air Jordan. It must have air. So it has it in the forefoot and it also has it in the heel. And they also gave a little bit of a window here. It's a smoky gray area where you can see the airbag as well. Okay, cons. Uh, you know, I'm going to have opinions. So uh, I don't know how durable this upper will be. Uh, this shoe has been out in the hands of influencers for some weeks now. And I would always feel like this material would tear in some way. Uh, it is kind of like a micro mesh along with fuse along the sides uh, and all along the sneaker. But uh, I guess so far so good, uh, especially with the clips plate where, you know, dirt and if you play it on, on an outdoor court, that dirt and everything else can get right in there. So it's going to be interesting to see like how over the weeks, months, years, uh, if that ends up happening, if it's going to destroy the airbag, whatnot. Um, but, you know, I feel like there should have been a little bit more protection. When I was growing up, this was all the protection we needed. So there are synthetics, a lot of synthetics on the sneaker. You have it on the pull tab, on these two pull tabs here, the tongue, and on the rear. Uh, I would say that this is like a new buck material, although I feel like it's Durabuck. The heel portion and this collar portion are two different materials. You can pretty much feel and see the difference as well. And then the pull tab at the rear, you can't even stick your finger through it. The only way to really do it is to use your thumb and your index finger to get your foot into the shoe. Uh, as well as these as well, the two pull tabs on the sides, you can't fit your fingers through. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where you take the shoe and you put it right on your, on your foot. So I feel like those holes should have been bigger or it just shouldn't have any loops whatsoever. The ankle supports here, there's really no padding. Uh, I don't really see a purpose into it if they're going to make it look like it has some type of earphone on it. But... I feel like there should have been a little bit more padding on there as well. Uh, and then as far as like the micro mesh that you see here, there's this line on the lateral side, on the medial side, it's black, but you can see it more on the white portion of the shoe where you see this line where the tongue is attached to the shoe and down towards the strobel. You can see this line coming down on the lateral side of the shoe. I mean, just visually, it doesn't look appealing at all, but I feel like there should have been a little bit more of a workaround uh, for that in the literal sense. So, although like with the Air Jordan 4, you know, you don't see your foot through that. So I feel like they should have covered that a little bit more. And you, again, you don't see it too much on the black portion, on the medial side portion of the shoe, but I feel like those two areas should have been covered. But I get it, like if you're playing basketball, you want breathability, but I feel like this sneaker is gonna give maximum breathability to the upper. And then these rivet types on the shoe as well. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, and five. I get it's like a connecting piece to kind of like bring these materials together, but I think it could have been cleaner in my honest opinion. Um, as far as the holes up top by the uh, pull straps, you can't even fit the aglets through on those pieces. Some people like to tie their, their laces up higher. So, you know, having to, I guess, try to fit this in there, you can't really because this aglet is thicker in diameter than the hole that's in there. The tongue portion, like when I first saw this part, I thought it would flip down kind of like the Air Jordan 6, but it's kind of just stuck on there. And I don't get like this little portion of the tongue, although it is like that reflective material, kind of like how it is on the box. And you know, I still have to kind of go over the box and like what's cool about it and what's missing, but uh, it has that effect where it has the 34 in that holographic look. Um, another con is, and I've I've always disliked this, is the type of foam that they use on the shoe. It is soft and squishy, feels great, but the lines on there, when you put the shoe on, and I just tried this on just to see like 
if uh, the 10 and a half would work versus my regular size 10 and I'll go over that in a bit but you can see like the creases just coming through I think this bothers me more than actually creasing the toe portion whenever you walk in your retros so like this portion right here I just feel like even if you're not a heavy player uh, even if you try on the shoe it's compacting in a way where you see those creases on the midsole and it already looks like it's super worn. So even on the black portions, like you can make your nail indentation and I, <laughs> I feel like it, it just sticks. You know what I mean? Like, so that's just something that like really bothers me. And then other things like I was looking at some of the storytelling, trying to make light of it and, and, and see if like I counted the holes like on the side uh, right here by the toe. If you pull out the Air Jordan 20, there's 69 like these, uh, I guess, dimples on the heel portion of the shoe. So a lot of people, if you guys know Michael Jordan, 69 points was the most points that he's ever scored in an NBA game. So when I made light of this, it reminded me of the Air Jordan 20. So there's 38 of those dimples on the side here. And I guess if you think about 38, 38 would be the time that Michael Jordan came back to basketball for the last time. And of course he retired at age 40. But um, I mean, I figure if you're going to put like little dimples on here, kind of like the Air Jordan 20, you kind of want to have, I guess, similar storytelling. And then this band-aid portion of the shoe, it's got the holographic look in between the holes as well. And there are 27 of those holes in this. So again, the significance between 27 and 38, uh, probably not. But I think, you know, whenever it comes to Air Jordans and like those Easter eggs, I think that that should continue on with the Signature Series because that's what makes like having to break down this shoe, you know, that much more fun. Lastly, on the back, there's this, I guess, eclipse-looking portion behind the tongue. It says, Authenticity Inspired by the Greatest Player Ever. And it says, 1985 to Infinity. So I'm not sure if all the Air Jordan 34s will have something different on the back of the tongue, but uh, that was different. Uh, the insole itself, it is a red insole with a black jump man and on the bottom it says 34 and you can see that the sticker which usually is like a size sticker it says upper contains synthetic leather so none of this on here is genuine so i mean it would have been nice to have some sort of genuine material on the air jordan 34 just to give it a little bit more of a luxurious look i mean we may very well see later on if they just do decide to do that to put any type of luxurious material on the Air Jordan 34. We're going to go to the back here. I don't understand the little lip portion of uh, this area. It kind of reminds me of like what the tongue is up here on the 34. So I think that they should have just kept this clean, not have anything up here as well as the heel. And it's just a little bit bothersome, but you know, whatever. And then two more things. We have like these little ridges on the sides just before you get to the heel. So there are six like ridges there. It kind of reminds me the Air Jordan 23. Where on the 23, you guys remember that it had the fin on the back. It kind of acted as a pull tab, but not really. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's pretty much similar to the storytelling, I suppose with the Air Jordan 34, but uh, it's got six, so I assume that's six championships. And then as far as like the vamp of the shoe, I believe it's like Braille or Morse code. Uh, it says Jordan on the vamp of the shoe, and it is the same on the other side as well. And then finally, the storytelling with the sole. So um, zoom air here, and then zoom all the way across. So it'll let you know that there is an airbag up by the forefoot and down below by the heel. Okay, and finally, we go back to the box. So it's a white box, Air Jordan 34 up top. You got all the little dimples up on the top of the box and on the bottom. You got the Morse code on the side, Jumpman on one other side. And then what I thought was two openings on either side. 
So the one side that's flat, it has a flap on the bottom. It has the Air Jordan 34. The price is actually ripped from the sneaker. I feel like there was going to be some type of discussion when it came to actual pricing of the sneakers. So when Nike removed this, I felt like they still didn't have a price in mind for what they wanted to price the Air Jordan 34. So might have been last minute. There might have very well been a price on there. Who knows what it was. But uh, yeah, it's ripped off. So it is a uh, style number AR3240, color code 100, made in Vietnam, which a lot of signature Air Jordans from you know the past few years have been made in Vietnam. White, university, red, and black. Now there's other colorways that are being named as far as like this specific colorway. I've heard bread, which is ridiculous because it's a primarily white base shoe. Um, I've heard Red Orbit. I don't know where that's come from, um, but it is White University Red and Black. I went with a size 10 and a half, but when I went to the Flight 23 foot action store in Los Angeles, I tried on a size 10, and for some strange reason, the size 10 fit perfect. Um, I don't normally go true to size in Signature Air Jordans, only because ever since the Air Jordan 2012, I've always had to go a half size up. For the Air Jordan 30, I've had to go almost like one full size up because for some strange reason, that particular model was just very constricting and very narrow. But for this year's, I tried a size 10 again, like I said, in store, and that felt fine. When I tried on the 10 and a half at the house, it felt the same. So I don't know what's going on with my foot. It might have been the pair of socks that I was wearing, although I was wearing thinner socks when I put these on or when I tried these on. So I'm not sure exactly. It was the same foot too, so I don't know exactly what's going on there. But um, as far as 10.5 and, and what I have now, I was thinking about, well, when I get this shoe, I'm going to return it and get the size 10. But I think I'm going to stick with the 10.5. It, it felt fine. I don't have any problems as far as like length being too long for a size 10 and a half width wise the size 10 and 10 and a half they were about the same so you know not much to a degree i suppose when it comes to sizing in this um, but you let me know in the comments what you guys went with if you guys are even copying the air jordan 34 uh, i feel like this is the only colorway unless they do like a real black and red version of this sneaker uh, that I'll definitely go after. And uh, also one more thing that I wanted to point out is that, you know, Zion Williamson has been playing in like really nice colorways of the year Jordan 34. Jordan Brand, can we at least get one or of those colorways that he's wearing on court? Because, you know, some of those color combinations are pretty hot. You let me know down in the comments section what you guys think. Again, it's MJO23Dan. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for uh, the subscriptions, for reaching out, um, and all that good stuff. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Subscribe to me here on YouTube. And I will talk to you guys later. Thank you guys. Take care.